these suppers that they would have in the early church called the agape feast. And really what it is, is today's basically language would be, we're going to have a potluck dinner. Right? You guys have parties and you say, hey, I, I don't want to cook the whole thing, so you bring a dish, I bring a dish, and we all come together and we eat. It's the exact same thing that was happening in the early church, but they would have these big feasts, and then after the feast, they would have a time of communion, where they would break the bread, you know, that represented the broken body of Christ. They would, they would have a drink, and that would represent the blood of Christ, and they would celebrate the Lord's death. And so what was going on now, though, is these people would come together and they would actually bring their, their you know, their, these wealthy folks would bring a bunch of like steaks and all kinds of stuff. And, and they would go to the front of the line, make sure that they're getting all their food first. And they'd be hammering down wine, getting drunk. And next thing you know, the, these, these, maybe these, these slaves or maybe some of the more uh, poor people in this group of body of Christ would come and there would be, all the food would be gone. And these people would be intoxicated, and everything was out of order in the church. And as they'd come to the communion table, they would be so intoxicated, they couldn't even understand what communion was. And they were taking it flippantly. And so Paul now says, you know what, guys? i got to be able to speak into this and make you guys understand that selfishness stinks, man. Particularly when it comes to taking communion. With that backdrop, let's turn now to 1 Corinthians 11. And let's start reading and really dissecting the scripture here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting now in verse 17. The Holy Spirit pens through the Apostle Paul these instructions to the church in Corinth. Now, in giving these instructions, I don't praise you, since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. And one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? Man, I don't praise you. Pause right there. What's that? Exactly. In, in verse 18, look at the word division. And I want to speak on that real quick. Go ahead and circle that in your Bibles if you have a pen. Again, you can mark up your Bible. Don't think that you're defaming God. Mark up your Bibles, man. Circle it. Write words on it. Write illustrations. Division. There was division among you. Now, in 1 Corinthians 1, in fact... Um, you don't have to turn there. But as we began this book, we talked about this before. We talked about division in the church and, and how God really just, uh, he hates that. He wants us to be together. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, it says this. I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, see he rats out Chloe for telling on, <laughs> that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, well, I'm of a Paul, or I'm of Apollos, or I'm of Cephas. Or, I go to this church, or I go to that church. Or, I'm Baptist, I'm this, I'm that. And verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? What's he saying there? Hey guys, listen, it's not about what church you go to. It's not about who your teacher is or who your pastor is. It has nothing to do with that. God has employed different churches with different styles for different people. Let me explain. When you come into Calvary Chapel, you see just a little bit different style, a little different maybe approach. You know, you might see a, a, a Christian rap video when you walk into the, to the, the Bible study. Now, some of you guys might go, that, that's kind of weird. Or, or that's irreverent. Or um, the pastor's got holy jeans on. I don't know about this whole deal. This guy, he, he doesn't really, doesn't respect God. He just... Now, here's the thing. That might be um, your approach as you come in. And here's the thing. There will be some people that go, that's just not for me. 
This church is just not for me. And, and I will say to you, that's fine. There will be another church with a different style, with a different approach, because it's made specifically for you. Um, that is crucial for us to understand. And here's the thing that I've always said. Um, God will, has made you with a specific, a specific way and a specific style for that reason. And that's why there are different churches. There'll be a Calvary Chapel. There'll be a different style of church. All of these churches, if they're teaching God's word and they're loving Jesus, praise God. Because all of us together, we're one. So the problem lies when I, as a Calvary Chapelite or whatever you want to call it, am pointing my finger down at another church and saying, I can't believe you're doing this and you're doing that. Because they're different. We need to, we need to celebrate those differences and be one team together. I loved a couple weeks ago when all the churches together, different styles, different ways they do ministry, came together in the name of Jesus and served the Omaha community. Nothing cooler. Step out. Step out and serve together. That is crucial for us as Christians to recognize that. Uh, when we were in Fort Lauderdale ministering there at Calvary Chapel down there, one of my tasks was to go to the campus at FAU and start a ministry there. And during that time, we, there was all kinds of other Christian clubs on campus. And a lot of them would say, well, why do you have to make another club? Well, I mean, there's already a bunch of Christian clubs. Just do it. And my response was, that's great. But there's just a little bit different style that we do things. But you know what? On the major things, we can do it together. So here's what we did. We had a meeting with all the Christian clubs on campus. All of us came together. And we prayed and we said, what can we do together? How can we major in the majors and minor in the minors? You know what we did? We, we, we came up to this. We actually made t-shirts for them. In the back, it's, and you know what we could do together? We could pray together. Can we pray together as believers even though, you know what, I might see things a little bit different than you or on some of these minors or I might have a different style, but I can surely pray with you as a, as a brother or sister in Christ. So we got together weekly and we prayed. All of us Christian clubs, we prayed together. You know the other thing we could do? We could serve together, just like we did with Step Out Here. We could go, hey, you might, you might be dressed in a three-piece suit and I might have flip-flops and a wife beater on, but if we're going to serve the campus all together for Jesus, praise God. And so we know what we do. We, we take trash bags and we, we'd all of us we'd come together, all the clubs, and we'd just go out and start picking up trash. And we say, hey man, you got something going on in your life to the students or fact, can I pray for you today? So we could pray together, we could serve together, and then we could share together. We could share the gospel on campus together. And I want us at Calvary Chapel to spend, please, please, please have that heart. No divisiveness. To, to appreciate each other's differences and say, hey, that's fine. You, now some people, you want to worship a little more liturgical. You like a little more uh, format and regimen in, in the way you worship. That's great. I love it. I got some advice from one of the pastors in, in, in Calvary Fort Lauderdale when we came here. And he said, make sure that you, um, God's called you to a certain style and a certain way you do things. And um, he, he illustrated a Taco Bell and a Burger King. He said, some people will come into your church and, and uh, say you're a Taco Bell, Calvary Chapel's Taco Bell. And some people will come in and go, hey man, um, I, I'd like a Whopper, please. And I said, my response would be, well, um, we serve tacos and burritos here, but there is, there is a, a Burger King down the street. They serve Whoppers. You can go down there. They do that well. I don't know if you guys understand that, but the, the basic principle is this. We want to serve. We want to serve together in this community. We've called to a specific um, way we do things, but we never want to point our fingers down or have the cause of separation between churches. And I, and I want to continue to reiterate that for all of us. Now, the practical application was in here, was it was actually among the church. So let's say Calvary Chapel has a big party, okay, which we will have. I don't know whose house it's going to be at, but I think it might be this guy right here. No. But we're going, to have, we're going to have a party from time to time, man. Just come and hang out, you know? Crack some brews. No, I'm just joking. Grab some root brews, right? And have some burgers, hang out, you know? And, and you know, we're not going to sacrifice the meat to idols first, but we're going to just come together and, and hang out a little bit. Now, when we do that, here's the thing. The tendency is for the certain groups in our church right now, the certain uh, different people that know each other, to go to the party. You know, and you guys know how it is. It's a third grade party where the guys were there and the girls were over here, and the guys were like, hey, how's it going? 
the tendency is going to be that. 